this bear market, it just keeps moving on. So what does that mean for my portfolio? What am I going to do about that? So if you want to hear about that, as well as see my portfolio update for the week, and I've added a new stock to the portfolio, stay tuned. Hey guys, Kevin Burgess back again with yet another video. Today I want to talk about this bear market and and you know it's kind of like being on a roller coaster. So Monday and Tuesday of this week were really good, right? We had these big green days on Monday and Tuesday. Not so good the rest of the week. So we we're, we're on this bit of a roller coaster. I remember uh back in the old days when I was growing up Near our, our uh, home, there was a, a roller coaster that was called the Zippin' Pippin'. I still remember that. So I don't think I want to call this bear market the Zippin' Pippin', but maybe we should call it the Rolio Portfolio. And I wish I had a drum roll. But it is quite a roller coaster. But just remember this. You tend to get hurt on a roller coaster when you jump off. So we'll talk about that a little bit further as we move along. You'll notice that I'm not in the same spot that I'm normally at. I'm at a 80th birthday party for my father-in-law this weekend. So I had to find a, a place where I could actually film a video for you guys. And while I was here, I happened to run into a subscriber named Preston. So Preston, I am really glad uh, that I got to meet you. Preston and I got to talk about the Fed. We got to talk about the market and where these things are headed. So we had a really good discussion, really good time. So Preston, glad to meet you this weekend. So I want to talk about three things this week. I'm going to give you a portfolio update quickly on the week. I want to talk about what am I going to do in this bear market? Is there a strategy here that I need to change? And then thirdly, I want to talk to you about the stock that I've added this week to the portfolio. It's brand new to the portfolio. I've never invested in this stock before. So I wanted to pass that along to you as well to see if it might be something you might be interested in for your portfolio. Now, as you know, I'm not a financial advisor. My role here is just to share with you what I'm doing in my portfolio. If it's something that you like, uh, maybe you could put it into yours. If it's something you don't like, you make sure to keep it out of yours. But at the end of the day, I think it's helpful and I think it's encouraging to see what someone else is doing and where they're at in the process. Because really what this is about is about us encouraging one another to stay invested because in the long run, that's where our portfolios begin to grow. So let's take a look at the portfolio update for this week. So you can see for the week ending October 7th, the market change was about $21,231. You can also see that in the options category, I gained about $100 almost. There were no dividends this week, and I did fund the Snowball account by $50. So you can see that uh, for the week, we grew the portfolio by 2.7% overall. Now, I will say that after Monday and Tuesday, that number was 6.7%. But, you know, you look at the S&P 500 down here, and we uh, outperformed the S&P 500 by 1.2%. So the S&P went up by 1.5%. We went up by 27 You can see then down in the at the bottom here, you can see that from a year-to-date perspective, we're still down about 12.4% just market change. When you factor in the dividends and um, options that we've done for the year, that actually adds back to our portfolio about 2.7%. So overall, as a, from a total return perspective, we're down about 9.7%. I like to compare the market change, which is the minus 12.4, to the S&P 500, which is down 24.1%. So we're down about half as much as the S&P 500. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'd love for us to be up 12.4%, but given the market that we're in, this is not a bad return to have. So where does the market go from here? And I will be the first one to tell you I have no idea. I don't know whether it's going to go up or whether it's going to go down. But my guess is it's going to get worse from here. So why do I say that? First of all, the Fed's making unprecedented changes to the discount rates. They're moving them pretty quickly. And as everybody knows, there is a bit of a lag between these Fed movements and when the economy actually feels these movements. So it's kind of like driving a car really fast. If you need to make a quick turn, 
it's going to be pretty much impossible to do. You're going to flip the car. And I think that's where we're at with the economy. The, the Fed is moving really quickly, and they're not going to be able to make precise changes to their policy in time for it to really help the economy. So I think they're going to go too far. That's my personal belief and personal opinion. So then the next question is, if that's really what I believe, then why don't I just sell everything and wait for a better time to enter the market? Well, there's three reasons that I think that's a bad idea. First of all, I don't know that I'm right. So we could actually begin to improve from here and everything is lovely. And now, you know, if I sold everything, I'd be out of the market and, and have lost that bit of gain. Secondly, if the market does fall further, how do I know when the right time is to get back in? I will know that. And by the time I figure it out, I will have lost that gain also. And thirdly, staying invested helps me take advantage of some really great deals in the market right now. I think as we look 10 years from now, we're all going to be glad that we DCA dollar cost averaged into this time of the market. I think we're getting some pretty good deals, and I think those deals are going to help us in the long run. They may not help us tomorrow. They may not help us a month from now or even six months from now. But I think when we're looking at a five-year, 10-year perspective, I think we're going to be pretty glad we were buying in this market. Okay, so let me introduce you to my new ticker, the new stock in my portfolio. This stock is called WEC Energy, and WEC Energy is a utility based out of uh, Wisconsin. You can see a, a Simply Safe dividend score of 87, which is very safe. You can see they have a dividend yield of 3.4%. They have grown over the past year, they've grown their dividend by 7.4%, which is a nice growth trajectory for a utility. So let's look at their dividend growth over the last five years. You can see that they've grown on average 6% per year. And over the last 20 years, they've grown their dividend over 10% per year. That is phenomenal. So let's look at the uh, earnings payout ratio. You can see that it is somewhere in the mid 60s. Now, typically I don't like to have companies that are over 60%, but this is a utility. And I think utilities uh, will by definition have a higher earnings payout ratio. And the free cash flow payout ratio really doesn't apply here because of the way that they uh, need tremendous amounts of capital to invest in their earnings moving forward. To take a look at this earnings per share picture, it is up and to the right. You'll see that this year, the uh, Simply Safe dividends is predicting at $4.33, $4.33 per share in earnings this year. I took a look at some of the uh, WEC investor materials. They are predicting between $4.36 and $4.40, and they are guiding to the upper end of that range. So we're probably looking at somewhere around the $4.39 to $4.40 area. So one of the things we like to do is take a look at the shares outstanding. We'll see here that they're pretty flat for the last uh, eight years or so. Uh, utilities do have a tendency to raise capital, and they can raise capital through debt, or they can raise capital through uh, issuing more shares. So this is not alarming to me at all. Another thing I like to look at is the return on invested capital. It's a bit low for my taste, but for a regulated utility that has a 3.5% dividend yield, I think I'm okay with this. Let's take a look at their net debt to capital. You can see it's around 57%, and their interest coverage ratio is above four. And for utilities, we like for that to be three or above. Let's take a look at what Morningstar says about uh, WEC Energy Group. They say it has a fair value around $95, and um, so therefore it's got a 10% discount. I think that's a great time to get in this stock for my portfolio. So when I look at my dividend growth portfolio, you can see that you know, this is the portfolio that I have uh, focused on uh, higher dividend growth and lower dividend yield. When I look at the diversification tab, you'll see that I've got a little bit of utilities here, 6%. Those utilities are 
WEC Energy as well as Atmos Energy. I think this is a good blend to have. I've got WEC on the electric side. I've got Atmos Energy on the gas side. Both of these are solid utilities. When I look at the dividend growth for Atmos over the last five years, it's running at an 8% clip. It was about 8.8% in the last year. So I like both of these utilities from a dividend growth perspective. I think they're going to add a lot to my portfolio. They're going to give me some stability, some shock absorbers for all that's going on here in this roller coaster of a bear market. And so maybe that's something that you would want to consider. Take a look at these stocks. Uh, if you've got any questions on either of them, certainly let me know. Also, one thing to keep in mind with utilities is that utilities are heavily leveraged. So they have a lot of debt. And so one of the things in a rising rate environment is that the, the variable debt, the, the debt with variable interest rates, will have a tendency to go up, causing pressure on earnings for utilities. So keep that in mind, but I want to show you how to look for that in their 10K. So I won't go through the process of pulling up the 10K. Just trust me that you can go on their website, pull up their 10K, and you can do a couple of things. But but in this particular area, I typically will go to the interest rate section and you'll notice that there are several risks that they talk about. One of those is interest rate risks. I've highlighted here for you what WEC has calculated as their potential risk for a hypothetical 1% change in interest rates. And they've calculated somewhere between, uh, somewhere around a $24 million impact. That's roughly about six cents per share. And you'll notice last year's earnings were $4.11. This year, we're probably talking closer to $4.40. So if interest rates go up by 1%, they may give up future earnings for that. However, I am comfortable with that $4.40 because they recognize what the interest rates are changing this year. It's really more out into the future that these uh, interest rate changes would, would impact them. But for WEC Energy, I don't see a, a huge issue here with interest rates for them. Obviously, if we're dealing with something really long term, it's something that we definitely want to keep an eye on. But I think it's a great time uh, for my portfolio to get into WEC Energy as a dividend growth investment. So hopefully that's been helpful for you to see where my portfolio went this week about what do we do in this bear market? How do we think about that from an investor perspective? And then taking a look at this new stock that I've added to my portfolio. Hopefully that's going to be beneficial to you. If you like this kind of content, if you wouldn't mind, hit that like button. That really lets other people know that the content's worth listening to. And then if you're not a subscriber already, we are getting really close to a thousand subscribers. I'd love to see a thousand subscribers come through. So if you, if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing to the channel. I'd love to have you along for the journey. And with that, I will see you on the next video.